Eminem walked out the door. No, hi. Good morning. It's me, Maria. Happy Monday. Welcome to our Fox 11 Newsroom Hangout, kind of a behind-the-scenes look at what we do here today. And today, we're going to try to hang out with Kenny Loggins. Kenny comes here every so often, and he's going to be performing a bunch of songs on the set. And so we're going to try to get him right before he starts to sing. So hopefully in the next couple of minutes, he'll be um, coming to join us to, to chat a little bit. Yeah. We're also talking about something kind of important, actually. And I wanted to get your um, take and your opinion on this, because last night was the American Music Awards. And um, Chiggy, you're going to have to unzip and do it. Um, last night was the American Music Awards. This is behind the scenes. Chiggy's changing my battery. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. I'm working now. <laughs> Thank you, Chiggy. I'm back. Um, so, um, anyway, so last night for the American Music Awards, Katy Perry performed, and she was dressed up as a geisha, mm -hmm. and the song Hear Me Roar yeah. has nothing to do with Japan. But anyway, so she was dressed up as a geisha, and a lot of people on Twitter went bonkers crazy because they felt like, whoa, 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 wait a minute, that's kind of a racist, insensitive move. Why? Well, As an Asian, I don't see any problem with it, yeah, but someone did raise the a question. Someone, well, me... someone raised the question, let me say really, someone raised the question that, well, why is it okay for her to dress up as an as a Japanese girl with white, um, the white makeup and all this kind of stuff, and why isn't it okay for someone to dress up as someone who is black? Well, there's there's a little bit of a difference, A, but B, um, I don't know that the white makeup was necessary. Um, well, well, the Japanese do, 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 do so, paint it like crazy white, white I get though. It. Right. I get it, but I don't know that that was a necessary part of it. But let me just ask you this. Yeah. Hector, mi hermano. Buenos dias, Tony. Buenos dias, Maria. How are you guys on this Monday morning? Let me ask you something. Let me ask yeah? you. Yeah. Would you be offended if I attended an event dressed in a mariachi costume, sombrero, with the vest and the you know the ornate vest and pants? Would that offend you? Of course not. That wouldn't offend okay. me. Then, then what, no. What's the difference? That's what. That's what I mean. But because I'm not. I'm not painting my face to look like I'm Mexican or Mexican American or anything. <laughs> Then that could be offensive. Oh, so you draw. Oh, I see what you're saying. So you're drawing the line. Um, it's, it's with clothing. With, painting, with the makeup. The, the painting. The makeup. I disagree with you on this end because the geisha is known traditionally for the white painted yeah. face. Yeah, I get that. The, the look, the whole look is included so the is, white face, that right? Is the look. I get that. I'm just saying that that you know some people might consider that right. more offensive. Right. So but I, I but if you mean, just dress up in someone else's clothing. In the, in the clothing of another culture, I don't know why that in and of itself right, should be offensive. Right, that shouldn't be offensive. Yeah, unless the geisha look I mean, is derogatory in, in itself. Yeah. And also within the it's context not, right. of it, it was not yeah. derogatory. Yeah. The, yeah. Offensive, the offensive stuff was the girls doing the 9-11 stuff, things like that. That was horrible. I didn't see that. What I was that see, about? Yeah, oh, that was horrendous. Mm -hmm. She dressed up as 9-11 with people on her and stuff, dying. Where, on the on the American Music Awards? No, I'm talking about just Halloween costumes and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah, offensive no, costumes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, we're talking about the AMAs. Oh, I thought you were talking about offensive costumes. I'm sorry. Damn. All right, mute me, mute me. <laughs> no, 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 we want your. I want your opinion. Uh, in, intent, intent has a lot to do with it. You have to understand, blackface was a whole industry, and that was, and the, and the intent of that was to make fun of a whole race of people. Right. It's all about it was, intent. It was, it was and intentionally context. done to offend. Right. Yeah. With, with intent to demean. Context, yeah. To demean. Right. To demean. Right. To offend. To yeah. to to yeah. put yeah. down. Exactly. Right. It was, right. It was intentionally done for so that so my question is, had she gone up on the stage and dressed up? As you know, a very famous black figure in the past, like Mrs. Mandela or something, and wrote a song and or not wrote a song, but just performed a song with the African theme. And, and, if, she, and if she wore traditional African yeah, garb, yeah, she wore traditional. African I don't think garb. anyone, people might not have liked it, but I don't think anyone would have said it was racist. But I, th it, but, I think but, people would have said it was. No, I some think, people but, but I think well, because I think some people are, 
will say anything. So anything, right. But I think that had she gone up there and dressed in traditional African garb and painted her face black. Right. Okay, so you kind of, I get what you're yes, saying. Yes, then, you then, the then, then I think people would have said something with completely the, different. With painting. But, um, but I don't skin. think there's anything necessarily wrong with wearing the clothing of another culture mm -hmm. and to say that someone can't wear the clothing of another culture simply because they are not of that culture is ridiculous. It is ridiculous. Yeah, it is. It is. I, yeah. I actually right. participated in a conversation uh, just a couple of days ago about a fraternity that did uh, uh, something very similar. They had a uh, USA versus Mexico party. And oh, people are, are screaming racism because of the fact that people went to this party wearing sombreros and ponchos and things like this. And while there is no actual, like, indication that there was racism involved, except for the V in the, the party name, um, it, the, the, uh, like, the, the college is, like, throwing people out, and, like, people are pissed. Hmm. Okay. Well, what was the intent? Yeah, the intent. What was the intent? The and intent to me, was the intent to, was to go up at a, at a frat and get drunk. That was the only intent yeah. that I can tell. And and to me, like getting drunk and the thing that you do when you're drunk, it's like there's a bit of craziness in it. It's not like a even AMA. There was a an award show. I mean, it's a performance. Whereas in a, like getting drunk or dressing up at a, as a different people from a different culture. But a but a frat party and a music award ceremony have a big similarity, and that's that they're trying to one up each other in bad taste. I mean, if if there's a music award and there's not a controversy afterwards, then it hasn't done its job. I mean, <laughs> there's a lot of sensationalism in the music industry now. And I, guess, and, and, I guess, and I guess, Matt, I'm not sure what the intent of having a U.S. versus Mexico party was. I mean, what, Just what, to be the, distasteful, pretty much. I mean, Yeah, if, if the point is just to be distasteful. And, yeah, and, to piss people off? Hmm. I think I think I think when it comes down to it, the intent was to get as much tequila into people as possible. But that's just that's just a guess. I get that? that. I th I agree with you. It's probably just to have but, an excuse but Maria, to have a tequila. But Maria, but but if I tequila. if I if I if I were um, um, what, what's what's the kind of the hula dancer or whatever what's Hawaiian the, Hawaiian Polynesian? If I were if I were wearing, if I were, hey guys, if we're I were, uh, because I know a lot of the the guys and uh, I know a lot of the uh, Polynesians. Well, I know a lot of the teachers who teach the hula dancing. Oh. Believe it or not, a lot of yeah. people don't know this are actually men in they Hawaii. They are. They're cool. A lot of the yeah. masters are actually men, and yeah. and these master dancers who teach to teach that. Now, if I were to to to, if I were to dress mm. in the traditional uh, Hawaiian yeah. garb, yeah, if I were to, mm. yeah. Traditional Hawaiian garb. You wouldn't consider that. I I see. It's what difference is. I need to mute uh, John. Let's mute John because I I don't know why I can't mute John. Um. All right. Um. For me, I I guess because I grew up in Hawaii where we dress in other people's outfits and and celebrate each other's cultures so yeah. much mm -hmm. that I that. I, I, I don't get offended by any of that at all. I don't understand why people would. It's to me, it's a celebration with the intent mm -hmm. to celebrate. Yeah. Intent, yeah. The, the intent, intent is to keep. The intent yeah. to celebrate. If that is your intention, yeah. then I'm all for you. And and, and I don't uh, know, you know. For, so I, I was just going to say, for full disclosure, I should point out that there were people, there were party goers there dressed up as Border Patrol. So that does not help their case. But I don't think that was the organizers. I think that was individuals. Yeah, but 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 I mean, you know, you know, I don't want to. I certainly don't want to lambaste every uh, fraternal ahead, uh, fraternal uh, organization out there. But I, you know, I, I just know that when I was in college, <laughs> I, I didn't think I didn't think there was much of what those guys did that were actually, you know, that that was actually uh, of any benefit to the community. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, 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 you, you won't go that far. But when there are a large amount of quantity of uh, beer around, then that hey, what guys. you said is true. Okay, get ready because I'm going to do a real quick on camera. Um, but that might have just been my college experience. No, <laughs> you're right. I was in a fraternity. We did dumb things. I'm so glad social media wasn't around. <laughs> there was so much beer around. Even when I was Nothing getting into my high happen. school band, I was hazed. I mean, <laughs> these things happen. <laughs> Get ready. Hold on. Yeah. So you know, I 
I think it, it always is, it, and, and sometimes there are fine lines that have to be drawn, but those fine lines make a difference. Oh, yeah. Mm. Hold on, guys. Oh, no. We're live now, it looks like. Hold on, Chris. Hold on. But not on TV. <laughs> Trying to act normal. Hold on, hold it's on. tough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so out right now. Listen, if you're on YouTube, you've got your second screen up, go to youtube.com slash myfoxla, and we're going to hang out with you, chit-chat. Kenny Loggins might join us as well. That'd be nice. All of our friends from all over the world, come join us. Okay. What happened um, to my IFB? Why did it go out? Okay, you guys, so um, I'm sorry to interrupt you. Go ahead. I uh, keep going. Where were you, Tony? No, I just simply said there there are fine lines of distinction to be drawn in cases like that, and I I think those fine lines are very important. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And the, and it's the intention ahead of time, right? Not afterwards when you're trying to explain away the the problem or guilt or whatever uh, controversy you lead up. Well, yeah, it's it's and how it you really, started. And it really is just a question of of sensitivity. Um, and it, I mean, I think any time that, that you decide that you're going to uh, venture into uh, into that in, into that uh, arena, you should at least think, to, uh, think, think about it, think mm. about, about, what you're, about what you're doing you and why you're say. doing it, and and how it, how it might how be it perceived. We yeah. in our business, like we always say, when in doubt. Check it out. So if you ever get a feeling of like, wait a minute, maybe I should, should I do this? Yeah. And so if all of a sudden you have a doubt, yeah. you should really check it out before you. Yeah. The like problem, the like problem you know. is when you're in college, you're, you don't think very much. <laughs> so oh, when, <laughs> when you're drinking. That's, that's, kind, of, that's, that's, what kind, of, that's kind of what college is yeah. supposed to help you to do. Yep. Actually, you're absolutely <laughs> right. I and mean, then you suffer the consequences, but then you learn. So in a yeah. way. Yeah, I mean, you're, you're supposed to, you know, part of what it's supposed to do is teach you critical thinking and... and uh, but you do learn some... Life and and sensitivity in because, I mean, yeah. you know, yeah. although college campuses are becoming wider and wider and that's not a, a criticism or, uh, or, I mean, that's just an observation. That's just what's happening in this country. Mm -hmm. uh, they're becoming increasingly female and increasingly white. Uh, I, I didn't hear about it. In, oh yeah, you're getting. You're, you're, white, you're, you're, yeah. Oh, I yeah. know that more and more women oh, yeah. and girls. Yeah. Are oh yeah. No, they're college. becoming increasingly white. And in fact, if you look at particularly what has happened here at the university, uh, here at universities in California. Tony uh, keeps trying to take the microphone. <laughs> now be careful because we don't want to don't break. Don't play with the ball. But I can. I can. I can. Don't, don't, play, don't play with the ball. And one of the issues that has been raised. That's one big microphone. Is that, is that minority enrollment, particularly African American enrollment in, in universities. Is way down. Yeah, that mm, I knew was gone down. But so is the high school graduation rate. Yeah, they're yeah they're actually they're actually and I suppose more it's more accurate to say they're becoming uh, probably more more white and Asian. It's becoming more Asian, absolutely. Mm. Um, but it doesn't help mm. that you know people go on TV and say, you know, that they never went to college, but yet they're making all this kind of money because of technology. You know what I mean? So let's, oh, let's you're talking. You're referring to a specific story that we yes, did. Yes, we did. The other and this day. guy is probably yeah. making millions of dollars. But it's happened more. I mean, we. I think it's going to change a lot. Y'all nailed it. I think. Uh, I mean, Harvard is now doing online courses. When they start doing that, that's a change in the way uh, education is, especially in college. It's, it's become more common. Well, but it's coming becoming very specific in what field you want to go into. Yeah. And yeah. Necessarily need to have a and, bachelor's and this or guy, master's th th this particular guy oh, who's making a lot of money, uh, he grew up with computers and he knows them inside and out, and so he he dropped. And when when he was asked specifically uh, what attributed to his success, he said dropping out of college. You know that wasn't doing me any good whatsoever. I already knew this stuff. I think it's totally changing. I think in the old days, the education system, the only way we could get education is you had to go to college. But now, with information flowing freely all over the world, you really can learn so much online that you necessarily don't have to go into these brick-and-mortar buildings. Exactly. There's really no excuse for anyone not to get an education anymore. The, the, the thing, the, the, the thing yes. is, however, and I think that people need to understand that unless you are truly self-motivated and you're going into areas 
um, where your proficiency is really going to yield a good living, um, you, you, you know, that college degree is still very significant and is still used to exclude you from employment in a lot of places. I, I still recommend you go to college I, when I talk to young kids. You don't, what I say is you don't necessarily have to pay for that expensive college degree anymore. You know, of course, depending on the specialized sector you want to go into, but it doesn't make sense to pay fifty-five thousand dollars a year. Fifty, exactly. Which is the uh, which is, which is which the is tuition NYU. of uh, NYU. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just using that as an example. The tuition and fees and everything, I think, add up to like fifty-five thousand a year. Yeah, yeah, it's nuts. Why, why spend all that money? And come well, out first of, it? of all, people can't afford that. No. Yeah, most people can't afford that. Those who can is fine, but uh, there are very few people who can afford to send their kids to a college that charges, you know, where you where you're spending upwards of fifty thousand dollars a year for, for, you know, for for the, for your child's education. Let's face it, most parents, the overwhelming majority of parents in this country, could not afford that. No, and how then? How can they? Is it overseas? Like the kids from overseas will come and pay for that kind of education? Well, if they can afford to come from overseas, usually they can afford that kind of education. It just seems so like untainable. The fact that they're able to come over. Yeah. You know, especially uh, I know from, for instance, when I was in Sacramento, um, I remember very, very, uh, very well the first Gulf War. And we were covering um, the liberation of Kuwait, and um, <laughs> liberation. well, <I'm laughs> and um, it's inter it was interesting because one of the things uh, I did after that war was over uh, was that I, I went and interviewed a number of, of Kuwaiti students who were here uh, studying in the United States in Sacramento at the time. Uh -huh. One thing you have to understand about those students, the one thing I understood very quickly about those students is that, first of all, because they were citizens of Kuwait, they were all very wealthy. Uh, because you cannot be a citizen of Kuwait unless you're part of the royal family. Okay. okay. Uh, there are a lot of people in Kuwait who are not part of the royal family, but they're not citizens. Okay. They come in and they work there. In order to be a citizen of Kuwait, you have to be part of that whole well as far as I know if you if Kuwait is the only country that gives its citizens money at the end of the year when it comes to like we pay money to our government and taxes and so they the, get money and so these these the guys the were all very well off yeah no I know. I know you know they were able to afford an education here in the United States because Hi, Randy. everything was paid for them yeah I know they pay you to live there in the country amazing so um it's a long, a long, it's a short, it's a long, it's a long week for us because we are actually working through the holiday this coming week. Are you guys celebrating, um, how, what did, what did we deem it this special holiday, Tony? It's Thanksgiving. Thanks. What? Thanksgiving. Thanks, Thanks, Hanukkah. It's, it's the first Thanks, time Givica. since 18, Thanks, Givica. yeah, 18 something that Hanukkah begins basically the day before Thanksgiving. And it won't so. happen again for another 79,000 years. Yeah. Oh, wow. Interesting. Long yeah. So, um, You'll all be dead. Any, just, anyone here just, celebrating? I'll, I'll just put that out there. Celebrating? <laughs> Tony. Well, Thursday. you will be dead. I'm sorry. Tony. You're, we, you're right. We don't, we, we don't live more than 1,000 years. Okay. And you might all right. have the opportunity That's fine. to okay. continue living. If, if, if Nobody do, in this hangout, including myself, is going to be alive in 79,000 years. If they said to you, Tony, Tony, you're 70 years old, guess what? We have the technology now to keep you living for another 70 years. Would you do it? Well, maybe keep my heart pumping. I don't know whether... I would do it. What would be the quality of your life, though, at this point? Well, you'd see... I mean, what, what, at what point I of development is this technology that would allow you to have a quality... A good quality of life. I don't think that's possible well, right now. Well, that would be a given that if you could have, if you could retain the same kind of play life, along, play along, Tony. Come on. I would do it. I want to see my grandkids. But I would do yeah, it. Yeah, Google is uh, trying to stop aging, basically. Yeah. Like not just uh, uh, keep you alive for forever, but actually stop aging. 
which means your quality of life would be very similar to what it is. Did you did you have you did you guys see that story? And I mean, it it obviously it, it's just I found it to be a fascinating story about the woman who who recently just died, but she never aged. What? Yeah, she nice. never ate. She 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 what? she died at. Uh, gosh, I want to say you you guys need to Google it real quick. Woman who who died who never aged. It was just a few weeks ago. I've See, never heard this. Yes, and they have pictures of her, and she still looked like she was a kid. I'm gonna look it up. She right never now. she never aged, and she just died in her twenties. I want to say, but she looked like she was like. Oh well, she died three, in her twenties. But she looked like she was like three years old. They have Isn't pictures there a of movie her. about that. Yes, Where? Are you, are you talking about that twenty-one-year-old infant? She died as a twenty. She was twenty years old. You're looking at a twenty-year-old right there. Well, that's. No, but they're looking at they're looking at how they were how they can use oh, wait, cases like that to unlock. Like... Oh, I see. The mysteries of of aging. So through a defect, obviously there was some sort of. Yeah. Um, but but look at her. She does look like an infant. If you guys want to see, I'll show you. I'll she was 20 chat. years old when she died, and this is how she looked. Oh, I, I already put it in the chat. Oh, you did? Well, Fox News, huh? I mean, is, is that not intriguing? She's 20 years old. She never ate. She's like Benjamin Button. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, but is is that? I mean, am I the only person who finds? Does, she, does she talk? Does she talk like a twenty-year-old and stuff? Uh, you know, I didn't. I don't oh, know. Well, I understand what? she can't talk at all. She had a disability, of, or a, well, yeah, kind it of was. A she, birth. Yeah, she had a birth. Oh, birth. Yeah, had a birth. wow. I mean, she couldn't walk like, right. like a baby. Yeah. So, but you're right though, because I think then you look at that and you look at what caused. <laughs> Her not to develop in that way. Right. Yeah. I mean, and they're they're trying to you could, yeah they're trying to research how it is. Right. You know, but they think that even though you, that's not the result you want to have happen. No. She her condition may somehow you know unlock the mysteries of well, aging. Of course it yeah it makes sense. I mean that's often how we find uh, medical breakthroughs is through this kind of mutation right of of the genes and stuff or. Mistake. But I mean, when I read that story a couple of weeks ago, a few weeks ago, when she passed away, I was, I, I could not stop staring at that picture. I could not believe it. Wow. Well, I, th I think that if we're going to do a, a thing where we don't age, like we're almost at the point where it, it's the right time. Because if we don't age and we still re repopulate the planet, we're going to fill the planet pretty fast. But that doesn't really matter so much considering we're actually finding planets very similar to our own that we might be able to reach within the next 50, 100 years. So I think that this is possibly the right time for that. But what if Google develops a way to uh, make us not need food? <laughs> well, I mean, we're going to need some sort of, of energy source. I mean, food is our, our battery. I mean, that, that fuels our batteries. As, Google as a nutrition pill, and that's like all that you need for a day. Here it looks fine. Yeah, there it looks fine. Um, I'm a huge fan of Google. I do Android. I, I sign up for everything Google does. Uh, I am afraid that Google is going to be the first mega corporation. I, I think that it is very possible that in 50 years we're, uh, uh, we're going to be the United States government of Google. We're going to be the United States of government. Government of Google. Oh. They're just they're they're just pioneering way too much far advanced stuff that, that and some of it's sticking. I mean, some of it really is starting to, to come to, to fruition. Um, what do you think is the real answer about that barge off of uh, in San Francisco? Oh, they revealed it. They revealed it. Oh, they did. Oh yeah, it's a, uh, they they say it's going to be a uh, uh, basically a museum of future technology. So it's going to stay docked? Um, from what I understand, it's going to stay docked for a little while, and then it's going to go on a tour. Oh, okay. All right. That makes sense. Do you want to hang out with Kenny Loggins? He's a really nice guy, by the way. I I'm happy to, to meet him. I cannot think of a single question for him because I'm just not music-based. I'm sure Nick would be all over uh, would be all over him, though. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> Not that no, only some I can think of by him is the Top Gun song. 
Um, he or was it Foot? No, it was Footloose. Footloose. I don't know. He wrote a lot of music. He wrote a lot Caddyshack. Of, uh, Caddyshack too. Caddyshack song. Um, it. Um, Footloose too, right? right? Footloose. Uh, Remember that song? Footloose. You guys talk about Danger that? Danger Zone, of course, from Top Gun. How about? Whenever I call you friend. That doesn't that's, mean anything? These guys are too young. <laughs> too young. Even you are, Maria. Tony, I don't know. That's Randy. Randy. Tony knows that. Randy. Randy, you have a great from, voice. From France. No way. Uh, what do you mean, no way? I just well, heard look it. At, look at all his, ins <laughs> look at all his instruments. He's doing yeah, well, that's, that's, you can't tell that's, me no way when I just heard it. That's the, mag <laughs> that's the magic of auto-tune that I have built into the Hangout. <laughs> uh, no, but, um, no, Kenny Loggins, these guys are mostly too young. Uh, uh, Kenny's had uh, that's some that's amazing, amazing stuff. Young, mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you remember Kenny Loggins? Well, oh, I mean, he's done, he's, he's done um, almost borderline, like, white R&B stuff, crossover. You know, yeah, no, he, he was had a period of that. See, I'm curious, yeah. how, how did he get into the singing all those, uh, many of those movie songs? Like, was that he, like, know. really good or got a few hit and then got a hook into that area? Well, he was huge at one time, way oh, before was, you were born, that, probably. We're talking, we're talking, what, the 80s, right? 70s, yeah, 80s, maybe. 80s, yeah, he was huge, 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 huge. Yeah, I mean, right around true. the time that Springsteen and all those guys were... I mean, that was oh, all... Man. Like, Footloose and Caddyshack yeah, Footloose and all that stuff. Loose. He was yeah, all that. Yeah. yeah. I mean... Yeah. He's probably yeah. even got some Grammys behind him, I'm sure. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. We, he, well, lives in, uh, he lives in Santa Barbara, right? I think. He has... Uh, well, listen well, to this. I mean, he's sold over 25 million albums worldwide, wow. 12 of which wow. have gone platinum. Wow. He's won two Grammy Awards. For mm -hmm. his singing and songwriting, he co-wrote the book *The Unimaginable Life: um, Lessons mm -hmm. Learned on the Path of Love*. I mean, he, for the you know, really, honestly, for four. I, and what I remember him most. Let me tell you what I really just *Footloose*. When he did *Footloose*, oh my goodness, that's the one. Yeah, Footloose. that's the one. *Footloose*. Mm -hmm. Yes, and I mean <laughs> *Footloose*. I think. I mean, right? I mean *Footloose*. Like put him on the I put map. Put him on the map. In like in a huge way, right? I mean, he was all written, but I mean, I think that's what really, when he became like a pop culture icon at that point, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but he's he's a really good friend of our executive producer, mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and, and he's uh, also just a super, 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 super nice guy. He really is just, I mean, you, you could not ask or find a more down-to-earth, mm -hmm. just pleasant person. He's uh, he co-wrote some stuff with Michael McDonald. I can't remember the name of the band. Michael McDonald. He's a real famous guy, right? He, yeah. What was, oh, his, yeah. What was, um, that was that with what? He, that was uh, I'm forgetting the name of the song, but a really popular Michael McDonald song. What a fool! Was, uh, what a fool believes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me and, too. Uh, and, and apparently, uh, Kenny Loggins. Eloy, Eloy says song. Eloy says it's what a fool believes. Yeah, that's it. What a fool believes. Yeah. And uh, and apparently he came out with it first, but Michael McDonald's ended up being more popular, and right. from what I tell, a lot more popular. But I mean, you know, he's done, you know, Stevie Nicks, uh, you know, Top Gun, Danger Zone, Top Gun. Oh, he was Danger Zone. Oh, sweet. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, you know, th this guy is he's 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 amazingly accomplished. Yeah, no, he's huge. And um, you know, and he and I have to tell you, he hasn't aged that much either, really. <laughs> so I don't think he has. <laughs> Looks pretty much the same. Blame Google, blame Google. Mm. Yeah, may, he might have some some uh maybe he's uh yeah, got something going with Google. <laughs> uh hey Stacy, how are you? <laughs> That's funny. Hello, Stacy. Um where's your cute one? But I'm hoping yes. that we can. I'm hoping that you guys get to hang out with him because he's. A, I mean, he's he's obviously incredibly accomplished, but he's just. Uh, I think. Uh, and, and and honestly, don't be surprised when you talk to him to find out that he's just kind of a very low key, laid back, very easygoing, kind of a quiet guy. See, that's what surprised me about David Spade and um, uh, Andrew Dice Clay too. That they were so laid back. Yeah. It just amazes mm -hmm. me. Well, yeah, especially when you think of 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 of, of what uh, you know, especially some of these people have accomplished, and when you think of their um, 
uh, particularly in the case of David Spade, you think of his on-screen persona, you know, and so, you know, you, you, you see him on screen and, and then when he, you know, you see him in person in, in, a, in a much more relaxed environment and it's like you're looking at two different people. And then that's, I think you, you find that that's, you know, quite often the case. I mean, for instance, I know for a fact that Kevin Costner is, is, is a very shy guy. He's a very very, very kind of reclusive, shy guy. He's not He's not one of these people that, you know, is out there. And look at what he's been able to accomplish in his uh, in his film career. Whereas the Wayans brothers, I mean, they, they spend all day bouncing up the walls. They must have to eat eight times a day to keep that up. Well, I, that or they're incredibly uh, ADHD. Uh, you know, ADHD, what is it, ADHD? Is H- it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Attention. Where you can't pay attention because you have too much energy. Activity disorder. I think they. Yeah. I think they're all ADD. I think they really. I think several of them are. At least I think the two that always come here are. I've always been told I have ADD. Hold on one sec. No, I've always told I had ADD, but I always tell it it's. I have so much creativity flowing that people can't keep up. Well, let me tell you something about ADD. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let me tell you something about ADD people that I have found personally, um, and and I know because people call me an ADD magnet. Um, because a lot of my friends are ADD, and it's because I'm kind of, you know, I'm kind of like this, you know, and, you know, my friends are, a lot of them are like this, <laughs> and, and and so I, I actually do have a lot of, a lot of ADD uh, people in my life, and what I have found just from my own experience is that they tend to, to you know, while, while a lot of people, especially when they're in school or if they're in traditional jobs, a lot of times they don't seem to quite fit in. And a lot of people think of them mm. as, as maybe having uh, problems educationally. And otherwise I actually find that, uh, that they're highly intelligent and, and generally of, of, of above average intelligence uh, and, uh, and, and are able to do a lot of different, but you, but you know what they're, they're, they need, you know, a lot of them need to be engaged. You know, if they don't feel engaged, am I am I right, Chris? If 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 you you know, if you don't feel engaged, you eat, you're easily bored. <laughs> just, yeah, you know. we get bored easily, and I just uh, you know, you have so much going in your mind that you're just always thinking about new and different things. Yeah, that's what I think of it. By the way, Kevin I'm, Costner, you brought up Kevin Costner. Here's yeah. my moment. I'm going to share my moment with Kevin Costner. I just put it in the chat. I had a play of the day with Kevin Costner back years ago, and it was actually in L.A. Oh really? Yeah. So there you go. There's the YouTube video. Me and Kevin Costner. Looks like Maria mm-hmm. opened up her um, Google from her phone and she's filming the uh, studio. Tony. Oh no, she has another computer on the set. There's another computer there. Yeah. Oh, oh I see. That's cool. Oh, the, yeah. the one next to the weather uh, green screen. I forgot. Yeah. Oh, is she showing us uh, Kenny playing? I don't know what she's showing. Yeah, I can barely see it. Two, two guys. Still, uh, I see two guitar players right two now. Guys they are playing very just. Yeah, they're waiting oh, for a countdown. That what, is that? Yeah, yeah. here comes the countdown. It's just the yeah. two. Yeah, it's just the two of them, and they're doing yeah, a sound check. Yeah, Steve and Lisa are outside they're doing their sound yeah. check. Uh, yeah. yeah, Kenny is with. Um, yeah, the, they they basically travel and perform together now. He and 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 I don't know the other guy's name to be honest. I'm I'm sorry, but. Uh, but I kind of like it's his, not Messina, is it? Uh, from Loggins Messina. Is it Messina? Yeah. Yes enough, maybe. Because they have that one song, Danny's song, that I love. Love that song. Mm-hmm. I'm we can't hear him. He's, I'm hoping he's going to come up. I'm hoping they're going to yeah. come up. <clears throat> Maria's um, computer's on mute. That's why we can't hear him. It'd be, it'd be great to, to uh, for you guys to get to meet him. Uh, mm-hmm. But Chris, I can't believe you were in a play with. Uh, how long ago was this? That was uh, goodness gracious. My twins were, I think, a year old. So by uh, I think that was seven years ago. And so uh, the story was Costner came to Cal- Dallas Cowboys training camp in Oxnard, California. Yeah. And so uh, all the media is trying to get close-ups, and we're all on the side of the field. You know, about 500 of us. Well, mm-hmm. I don't like being on the sideline. I kind of like to be in the action, of course. So I just yell at him. I'm like, Costa, you can't even throw 10 yards, buddy. And he's like, you, get oh. over here, punk. So he punked me out, <laughs> and he brought me on the field. Yeah, and he, cool. he's like, go deep. And he threw that football 50 yards, and I was so sweating it out. Like, I'm never going to catch this. I don't have the wheels anymore. And I made up ground and caught the ball. 
Oh, that's that's cool. baby. That's cool. <laughs> yeah. I could show it here, but I, I, I forget how to, the best way to do that. That's a, that's a cool clip, uh, Chris. If you have it on YouTube, just share us the, the link. Okay. Oh, I was going to say, you just, uh, uh, on YouTube... The link is post, uh, Matt, yeah. Send us the, the actual... Uh, the it's link in the, the chat box. Yeah. It's in the chat box. Yeah. It's in the chat box already, Matt. Are you watching my box, Maria? There, there's Kenny. Yeah, it's from near the computer, Maria. Can you see them? We saw it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, Where's here's the other guy, Maria. We see them. We see them. Um, Do you know who the other guy is? That's his sidekick. That's his. He's the person who performs with him. <laughs> that's all I can tell you. I he figured out that. that is, a member of the the Blue Sky oh, Riders. That. Oh, I was just wondering oh, if it was you know Jim Grant, Messina. He's probably right. Hey, Josh. Um, he probably they just because they just released an album. I'm reading this from my favorite sleaze box, Wikipedia. Yeah, I, I, I hate think Wikipedia. It probably is someone from the from the Blue Sky Riders yeah. band. The names they give are Gary Burr and George Middleman. I don't. And know I can see Stephen and Maria Sansone. Yeah. Oh, are good morning, Lisa. Lisa's having one. You're having another nosebleed, Lisa. Right what oh, you're not bleeding from your nose, are you, Lisa? Life in the no, dear. Oh. <laughs> Several She's times. Being funny. Um, so David Spade is just is getting on over? set. David is not. He's got to run right after the set visit. He's hung out with us once before. Yeah, he's before, been here though. before. Yeah. yeah, and then there's Kenny. He's walking by. You can see him. He just walked by the Is he coming my over? Um, I'm hoping they're grabbing him now to hang out with us. Oh. Let's hope so. What I mean, is that set? Or, or, or else could be another one. one. He's gone. Do they? What are they doing? They have to live. Are they going? Is he going to be on the news or something? What's the story? So, I mean, no, he's going to probably have a music performance in a moment. He's going to sing. Um, but for what? For what of the station? Well, something. Who's what asking this? Who's asking this? Randy. Chris? Randy, what show? Randy. No, Randy, where are you? I'm in France, so I don't know about. Well, these no wonder things. you don't know what's going on. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, our show, Good Day LA, is 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 more of an infotainment show. So. Okay, okay, you're we, right, we, right, right, right. I forgot about of, that. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, actors and musicians. Morning, morning TV. And a lot of them will perform. A lot yeah. of the musicians. Like, uh, you can expect in December, I don't know if we'll get them in the hangout, but you can expect in December, just about every, in fact, pretty much every December, Stevie Wonder comes and performs on set. Oh, that'd be great. Uh -huh. and, and what he does, he does it a little He's differently. Sure. He doesn't, like, go over in the performance area where a lot of the other... Mm -hmm. uh, musicians perform. What he does, he'll sit right there at the news desk with the with the host of the show, and he has his own little keyboard sitting there, and he'll just oh. he'll just play and sing his songs, you know, and he'll take requests, and, you know, from all from 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 all his you know big hit songs, and he'll take requests, well, and he'll just start playing and singing them. Well, here's my situation right now. I just checked to see if Kenny could come join us. She's gonna run to see if he can. Um, Hopefully hey, she can grab him just for even a minute, yeah. just to say hello, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. Wasn't a Roxy so supposed cool. to pull him over here? What's that? Wasn't a Rock? Wasn't a Roxy just supposed to pull him over here? She was gonna interview him, right, and something like that. She's gonna interview him on the set. You're right. Speaking uh, of, any updates on Julie? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is an update on Julie. Julie's doing so much better. She actually um, posted a couple of pictures on her Instagram account. So if you follow her on Instagram, you'll see our bright, smiling Miss Julie. And she mm. has been um, graduated, or she has graduated to the less um, intensive care unit. It's like a one below. And um, classic Julie humor. She is rocking mm. her pirate patch and kind of like this... Her head is all wrapped up in bandages, you know, because she had surgery on her head, for those of you who don't know. Um, but she's doing That's really great well. great the observation. We're really happy that uh, she's doing better, and she should be back to work hopefully soon. Where's... Are you getting him back? No, he's not coming in, but um, Loggins. Kenny, let me find him. But he need a, we need him now. He's coming right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> hey, he's coming. He's coming. He's coming, yeah. you guys. Yay! Aren't you excited? Yay! Oh, this is so great. Okay. Very cool. Hi. I've got a question. I guess time. I just want to say it's a pleasure to 
have you join us. And just a heads up, Maria, we're going to keep it short. Yeah, yeah, come, come. We'll, we'll just do it for a second, you guys. Kenny's going to perform, um, he's going to perform, I think, two songs and then an, a set interview. So we just want to quickly grab him really quickly. Of course, uh, this is kind of a behind-the-scenes look yeah. at what we do in the newsroom. So it's very casual it. and informal. But look, you guys, Kenny Loggins has is joined it, us. Is it actually moving like that? Um, yeah. Yes, we are yeah. actually moving You're like that. Live. We're coming out with a bunch of people from all over the world right now. So I want to just quickly oh, really? introduce you. This is Chris. He's with us from Dallas. Hey there. Hector is here in the Inland Empire. So is John. Morning. Is here as well. And then we have Kempton. Where are you? Kempton? Hi. Uh, Hi, Kenny. In Hi. Canada. There he is. Matt uh -huh. is here in Anaheim. Nick is in Dallas as well. And then we have uh, Randy who is in the south of France. Randy, where oh, are you? Wow. There you hey, are. Kenny. And we Big have a bunch of your music. YouTubers watching us as well. So, hey, YouTubers. Kenny, of course, the Grammy Award-winning um, singer-songwriter. You've seen him um, uh, everywhere. And you're you're going to be part of the Hollywood <laughs> Parade as well, that's right? That's what they tell me, yeah. Uh, here, coming up. And also, uh, Kenny has a new book that's out, Frosty the Snowman. I was just thumbing through it. It's beautiful. Yeah, it came, and it came together really well. And it has some songs, of course, that you're performing on, well, right? Well, primarily, of course, Frosty the Snowman. And Classic. Then two more uh, with it, uh, Cindy Cindy, which is a, a cover, of, sort of a re reworking of an old Ricky Nelson song from mm -hmm. many years ago. And then... Uh, 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 Another one. There's, there's a, yeah, <laughs> I, I think there's a bunch on there. But listen, I know that you guys might have some questions. I know um, a bunch of people questions. have some questions on YouTube as well. Um, do, who wants to go first? Matt, well, I yeah, have a question. Go ahead. Um, I, I actually had a question, not necessarily about the music, uh, but uh, you did uh, 29 years ago, you were part of Live Aid. And that was huge back then. I mean, it was a defining moment in a lot of people's lives. And, and I was wondering, what do you think it would take to have uh, like an upsurge like that again, to, to actually organize something that big and that uh, uh, monumental again? Well, it, 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 there doesn't seem to be too far, uh, uh, music, it doesn't seem to be too far away from that now. There's so many huge festivals that happen that are on a, a really mm -hmm. large scale. Mm -hmm. uh, then and then there's Farm Aid, which happens I think every year. Every year. Mm -hmm. And so there are big things happening. It's just not not the Live Aid scale necessarily, but uh, but pretty big. Um, I wanted to say that Ivana from YouTube is watching. She says this is it is my favorite. Your music is in so, is so inspiring, and she wants to know what kind of music you listen to in your car. <laughs> well, <laughs> I listen to all kinds of stuff. Uh, that's uh, um, it depends on what I'm doing. Your I've mood. Got, too? I've got a yes. playlist for working out. I've got a playlist for sleeping. I've, ah. got, a, I've got different different. Uh, kinds of music that I listen to for whatever I need. There's no specific genre, right? No. Just all kinds. Of course. Yeah. Randy, you have um, the Kenny. question. Go ahead. No, go ahead, uh, Kempton. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, I have a question. Yeah, yeah. So, oh. so, so Kenny, you are, you're such a big star and won so many awards now. I want to ask you, uh, I've got a friend who is a new up-and-coming singer got his no song notice after six years. What kind of advice would you give my friend, like his name is uh, Cashy Keegan? Uh, mm -hmm. ah. um, but it's, it's a completely different landscape today. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I think the advice is still the same though. If you're a writer, keep writing and keep singing your material for as many people as you can and and hope for the the lucky breaks. Luck is so much a big part of, mm -hmm. of making it in the yeah. industry. But you just got to keep doing. That is often what I hear as well. Oh no, okay, they've got to, they've got to call um, Kenny back on the set now for the interview. So thank you for joining us. Let's okay. take a quick quick photo. Though. Quick photo. Thanks a lot for coming. One, two, three, cheers. Yay! Thank you. Okay. Thanks a lot. Thanks take care, coming, Kenny. Thanks, Kenny. He's awesome. I was tempted to ask him if those singing gophers that sing that's all right, if those bother him or if if he's no man, those are awesome. <laughs> yeah, behind the scenes look. <laughs> yeah. Bye bye. I see you out there. Okay. Yeah. Well, what is I would I was going to ask. Well, I'm curious. What's his favorite movie that he was a soundtrack? Mm -hmm. And I mean, Caddyshack, yeah. Footloose. Uh, I did so many. Top Gun. Yeah. Um. I don't know. There were. What's all your favorite, Maria? I would have to say for the boys, it would. No, it's hard to choose because I love. Caddyshack. It. I gotta go. Caddyshack. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't watch 
Caddyshack was just right before I think I really got interested in movies, maybe. Um, so but fun. Footloose and um, Top Gun, of course. I mean, mm -hmm. yeah, same for me. Footloose. What are you talking about? He was just here. Really? That's no, what? <laughs> you missed you. Ever. I, yeah, I have a I have a question. Oh, okay. How do you how do you get rid of the camera app? Oh, um, I just see click it, it again click and it, it goes again, away. Click the camera. Uh -huh. I actually don't see the camera. You I see the capture. Oh, capture. Yeah, I'm sorry. We okay. we we only had a short window with mm. Kenny because Kenny is performing two mm -hmm. songs and he's being interviewed on the set as well. So his and then he had yeah, set checks. Tight. Thanks, Tony. Okay, hey, you got him over. Great job. Yeah. Kudos. Thanks for getting him over. And thanks, Randy, for letting me ask the question. Yeah. My friend, oh, like, he, 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 yeah, yeah. Wasn't I really want to ask guy, that though? question. He's yeah, so he's, nice. He's, he's like he's too super nice. nice. He's super nice. He's yeah. like that all the time when he comes. He's yeah, he like really is. a sweetheart. And, uh, uh, by the way, Kempton, um, mm -hmm. there was a folk group when I was a kid. Again, the oh, older people, Tony, will remember. Uh, Peter, Paul, and Mary from from a thousand years ago. Mm. Uh, Mary was asked, um, "What do you? What's your advice to s young singer who was yeah. just starting out?" This is probably mm -hmm. like 1960, mm -hmm. and she said, um, "The only reason you should continue singing uh, and and trying to make it is if you cannot picture doing anything else in your yes. life." Mm -hmm. Which is a great. I mean, yes, and so she didn't true. say it in a negative way, but the point is, if you don't believe. You know, the, you're not gonna. When I was a kid, you could make money being a musician, yeah. whether you were great or not. Uh, but these days, there's no reason to try to do a career. You're not. It's not going to be the lucky job. You know what I mean? No, it's got to yeah. be the only thing you really want to do. And, mm. and then you know, yeah. hopefully, yeah. with the luck, like Kenny said, and mm. the perseverance. And mm. he also didn't mention. He seems to be a really nice guy. If you're not good at networking with people. They're not going to hire you again. Mm -hmm. So, and they're right. not going to want to work with you if you're a songwriter or a singer. So yeah. those things it are can be very talented, but if you're an, uh, an a-hole, I mean, why work? Why bother, right? Yeah. It, well, because there's so many people out there today. So mm -hmm. that's re all that remains to be good advice, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. But like he said, yeah. keep you just keep doing it. Keep doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You've got to you've got to have three things. You got to have uh, be passionate about what you do. I do. You have to be great at what you do, and you have to have people that actually want what you do. So if you then have you have to three. look as good as Maria. That helps. Yeah. <laughs> that oh, helps. Maria, Maria and Tony. Look at look and at Tony. Blondie. And Tony. Look at our blondie in the hangout. Love to stay in chat, but I'm on my way to work for my final day. And Tony, please, no need for therapy for abandonment. <laughs> I know. Thankfully, I can cancel my therapy appointment for today. <laughs> yeah, this is my final my final day of work today and vacation for the next two weeks. Yeah. Oh, so who celebrates Thanksgiving? Here. I'm going to Colorado, like I told you, Maria. Colorado. Uh -oh. Ski? When is, Ken fun. when is Canadian Thanksgiving? We, we had one house already, and uh, oh, we don't have Black Friday, by the way. It was yeah. last month. Yeah. Oh, last yeah. month. Oh. All right, guys. What, is the, uh, turkey. what, is, the point, have what is the point of Canada having Thanksgiving? Earlier. They're thankful for stuff too. It's a, it's a day of gratitude. We, we we are thankful for having you guys as our neighbor. <laughs> That's do right. I sound weird? Right? Do, 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 do I lie well? First of all, that was not a rhetorical question. <laughs> a, B, I was not being funny. I oh. really want to know what is the point of Canada having a Thanksgiving. I don't know. I mean, it's they a question of Thanksgiving. Stuff. Hello, yeah, you great, 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 great. don't you know why you have Thanksgiving? I can tell you why we have it. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? We have it because the pilgrims. The pilgrims. pilgrims. Mm -hmm. I have my worst, have my worst Thanksgiving with moment. our Native American. Native yeah. American. Mm -hmm. Ray, oh. you want to know my worst Thanksgiving moment when I was a kid? My mom had all the cousins. We had about thirty people over, and I was outside playing football. I came in, I'm like, uh, man, I'm starving. They're like, starving? We ate like five hours ago. They forgot about me. They had Thanksgiving without me. What do you mean? That was horrible. They didn't know that I was gone. What? Because we had 30 people over for dinner. They didn't, they happened to miss little they you. They missed How it. The dishes you? were put up and everything was put up. How old were you? Gosh, I was probably seven. Oh, my gosh. That's scary. Oh my. <laughs> yeah. Pretty traumatic. 
I fed 192 people. I fed 192 people Thanksgiving dinner last night. What? 192 people? Well, because you do. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I understand. Oh, okay. Nice. I understand what you do. Yes. Go ahead. Go ahead. Stacy has 50 to 60 people over for Thanksgiving. Wow. Um, can, can I actually uh, use this forum to, to mention that uh, uh, my mom has actually worked for homeless shelters, and oh. uh, I've worked at a homeless shelter. Mm -hmm. uh, Thanksgiving is a great day to give back, but never forget that everybody is volunteering to feed the homeless during Thanksgiving. Do it the other 364 days a year because homeless shelters really need that help. They, they really do. And they literally turn people away to volunteer during Thanksgiving. Mm. Uh, yeah, yeah, they, they do. Every I know other day is so true. So volunteer uh, at other times also. I mean, don't don't if if you have no spot for Thanksgiving, well, do it the next month or two months later. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right because they have so many volunteers now too on many. Thanksgiving. And now. a lot of them are celebrity volunteers here in LA who, who I know who do it the once a year thing and. Uh, Mm. Listen, you know, there was, there, there was some Christmas talk too. about that, like, okay, why do you only do it when the cameras are rolling or whatever, but you know what, whatever your intentions, if you have good intentions... Yeah, and a lot hey, of celebrities, but, you have to understand, support support mm. these causes with their with their money, and, 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 anonymously, that's, and that's very anonymously, important. Yeah, anonymously that's very important because that. these shelters couldn't do what they do without right. the, the, the kinds of donations they get from yeah. them. Yeah. From um, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, I, I, I Tony volunteers his time many often throughout the year talking yeah. to the homeless. Well, I, I I teach at a homeless a I teach and, at a homeless yeah. shelter. Yeah. Oh, hey, Tony, I really I, you say that we've done a story on what you do, but I haven't seen it. It's been recently, years. and I really think it's time to maybe even blog about it and then link to that video because you really have some great tips about what to do when you're presenting yourself in the best light and finding a job and mm. you know it, you really are that's, that's great a class that. that I teach at uh, the midnight mission <laughs> it's a class called how to make a great first impression on a job interview because these guys at the time there's a there's a course that they take just before they they leave the midnight mission which basically is it's one of these these courses that teaches them you know how to uh, survive once they get out there because they're going to need certain skills and one mm -hmm. of the things they're going to need obviously is a job mm -hmm. uh, and so I teach a course called how to make uh, a great first impression um, on a job interview and I've been teaching that course I guess at the midnight mission for about 10 11 12 years or so and before that I was volunteering at the uh, Los Angeles mission where I taught in, at the uh, learning center they called it where um, I, it's just kind of been one of my causes. That I, I just think it's, um, you know, you can't do everything, but 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 uh, homelessness has been sort of one of my. Mm. Yeah. One of my. That's favorite. awesome. That's what tugs at you. Um, yeah. That's great mm -hmm. what you do, Tony. It really, really is. It's wonderful. Um, Maria, have you taken your little one to do any volunteering yet? Not yet. He mm. will probably kind of young, destroy the yeah. whole setup. Um, yeah, I think, yeah, I think he, ooh, when, he yeah. Five, <laughs> when, he, yeah, when he's able to understand how to behave in a certain situation, because like right now we try to bring him to church and it's just, oh, here, Kenny's going to perform. Hang on for a second. Mm. Let me just let you listen. Let me see if I can unmute. <clears throat> can you hear it? You'd have to run over onto the set, Maria, and, yeah. and unmute over I there. I think you can remotely unmute someone. Uh, but yeah, Tony, uh, my mom was actually the volunteer coordinator at Long Beach Rescue Mission. She was there for oh, really? uh, five or six years. Yeah. 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 I you know I, I, I wasn't volunteering last night though. But that was a a dinner at my church. It's done. The men's council has put it on for. Uh, last night was our 89th year. Brown, 
down to the village Where the girls kick in the sand The honey here right there all around the square So that's the way we play We play down down the streets of town <laughs> That's great. <laughs> I think I see a multitask. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Okay, I'm going to let you guys enjoy this. I don't know when Maria is coming back over here, but I'm assuming she's going to come back over here. Doing. I have to prepare for the 10 o'clock show, so I'm off. All right. All right. You have a great day. See you, Tony. I got to go. Okay. There's a lot more people on the set there than there were when I was there. <laughs> Very busy day. Yeah. I think a lot of crew, but even a lot more talent. <laughs> So, YouTube. <laughs> Are we still live? Yeah, I think we're still live. Are we yeah, on our own? Still right? live. YouTube. I they think we are on our own device. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we're we still are live. Our domain. Oh, we can throw a house party now. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I guess. Oh, my goodness. Does anyone else have any fun plans on Thursday? 
Not really. Well, in Canada, I guess uh, we'll watch you guys have fun. Uh, and uh, watch your Black Friday shopping craziness. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's great. Do you guys plan to do any shopping? Any shopping plan? No, I don't. I, I boycott shopping on Thanksgiving Day and Black Friday. I do not go shopping on Black Friday. That's well, good ridiculous. for you. Good for like, you. Of crazy people are on Friday, mm. like people stampede each other and like shooting each other just to get good oh. deals. No. Yeah, it's it's worse yeah, now, but yeah. yeah. Years ago, I line up uh, during our, our Boxing Day, our, our Black Friday equivalent is Boxing Day. So uh, years ago, I line up a few hours ahead. But how much did I save? Maybe thirty bucks. <laughs> so why bother? Yeah, I, mean, I spend like it's totally not worth it. Three hours waiting. If anything, I'll look at some stuff on Cyber Monday. But. It's not worth it. I do a lot of homemade gifts, anyways. So mm -hmm. those are good. Like, yeah, th there's a friend of ours uh, who does a lot of homemade gifts, and we love them, like food or little, mm -hmm. um, yeah, decorative items and whatnot. It's it means more in a sense than uh, in some sense than just yeah. I do um, I do baked goods and like hippie soaps mm -hmm. and like homemade shaving mm -hmm. cream and bath salts and stuff like oh, that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool. So, mm -hmm. Nick, are you frozen or is your face just being weird today? What? Wait, what? But you look, you're, you look frozen. You're kind of frozen yeah. like this. Oh, yeah, you're back. You're back. Free moving. Am I back? Am I back? <laughs> I was checking our YouTube comments. I oh, think it's there you go. Okay. <laughs> you had like a weird sideways duck face thing happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what's, what are people saying on the YouTube? I don't know. I haven't gotten there yet. Oh. Uh, what? Nick, you need to get on that. Uh, Babe. On live. Bye. Well, gang, I've, got to, I've got to run. I have to work on my short documentary, so uh, wish me luck on that. Uh, I've got uh, stuff to take care of. On your, on your, what, you're doing a shark documentary? Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm doing a short documentary. I went to Hong Kong uh, for yeah, actually for almost, almost a month, and uh, I started uh, shooting uh, something. In my spare time, when I was in Hong Kong, uh, or not exactly one month ago, and uh, I think I've got uh, enough for a short talk now, so we'll, we'll see. Nice. Well, have yeah, fun with that. Yeah. What's that? Have fun with that. It sounds yeah. awesome. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. It, it's a lot of fun. Yeah, a lot of things are going into pieces, so uh, yeah, it's okay. it's fun. We'll, we'll talk more about that. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, all right. See you guys. You guys have a good one. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. The only person who's left us YouTube comments is Ivana, who I think is afraid to come in here, if I remember it correctly. No! Ivana, that is that is a female's name, yes? Uh, traditionally, yes. It would be nice to have another chicken here. It would be. So how about it, Ivana? No, but the same thing happened to me. The same exact thing. <laughs> oh, goodness. Yeah. It's so quiet. It is quiet. Problem. Problem. Yep. The <clears throat> coffee's still trying to kick in. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah, there it is. The oh, I just got hit with a performance. What? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna mute myself. <laughs> okay. I think we might be getting Selena Gomez in here in a few days. I say that it would have to be Tuesday or Wednesday. But Maria had said something about that last week. And Selena Gomez might be here. <laughs> Mighty.
Just imagine if we had Justin Bieber as a guest. <laughs> Justin Bieber. Yeah. Girls would be knocking down the walls. Well, yeah, but that's kind of his appeal now. Is what will he do next? <laughs> Bieber fans would probably want to come up, come in here. That couch over there is really comfortable. What the heck? Was that Windows XP? I want to get Seth Rogen in here as a guest and get a panelist that's really funny so that he just lasts the whole time. It would be epic. I can't even begin to emulate that. But <laughs> well, the wire's on. Is that brown blob right there, Maria? Trying to figure out. She might be about to do a letter hit. Yes, I am guessing they know that. YouTube, just so you know, Stacy's over here saying bad things about you. <laughs> you guys are buttholes. I have my thing muted. I would never say bad things about you, YouTube viewers. If, if, if only you could see the chat that's, that's, that's right you know over there. there. Yeah. <laughs> You hear that, YouTube? Or you can take that from <laughs> okay, her. Babe, my mic is on. So watch how you narrate that. Can you bring me my phone now? I, I am. Yes. God, it smells. 
<laughs> babe. It might be worse than the beach house. <laughs> babe. Yes, honey, I'm cropping it so all of our information is not on the picture. Okay? Hold on, guys, I'll be right back. Are you okay? Ooh, and she's not muted. Whoa! <laughs> Whoa, babe! Jesus! <laughs> Ha. Oh, ba babe. <laughs> you know you're not muted, right, Stacy? I know I'm not muted. <laughs> okay. I am very well aware I am not muted. <laughs> I may have to mute myself again, though, depending on how well you guys can hear everything that's going on. Bag that away. We can I keep back. hearing odd grunting. <laughs> yep. Okay, I'm going to mute myself now. It's called man poop. Why it's fun. <laughs> Are you guys still being left unattended? Yes, we are yes. still unattended. We're here by ourselves. Oh my god, they have the inmates running the prison. What is going on? That's right. <laughs> we're we're talking terrible, horrible things. Well, well I guess I guess Maria isn't coming back then. I think she's abandoned you guys. I, Actually, I think she's on set doing. She's done like the last two segments in the show. Yeah, she's doing another segment. So she's yeah, done. she's over at the little red table thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are, are you watching online, um, uh, Nick? She still has the studio cam on. Yep. Oh, okay. That's right. I, that's right. I have it up. That's right. What am I thinking? Hello. Um, we didn't want to just run away and have you guys come back to like an empty nothing chat, and we're keeping the YouTubers entertained. Yeah. Well, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> I really like the YouTubers. Your hair. I, I, I love I love that look. Thank you. I really do. But did you see the pictures I put up from this weekend? No, I didn't. But it's very distinct. I really like it. <laughs> Thank you. I was being very 1920s all weekend. Hold on. I see. I'll, I'll Nick, link you. Nick, thank you. I, I like the bows of the clown look too. Thank you. Oh yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, guys, I will close out for Maria because it's 10 to 10, so I know she's probably not going to have a chance to get back over here. But it Yeah, was you'll have to close off the uh, studio cam, too. Uh, yeah, I will. I, she'll have to do that for, probably. Um, but I have to see. I have to even see how to uh, – I don't even know how to – oh, stop broadcast. I see down here. All right, so listen, thanks, you guys, for coming in today. Really appreciate it. It's great to see you as always. And thanks for hanging with us and uh, for taking over the hangout when uh, when we abandoned you and 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 I hope you don't have any long term issues from that. <laughs> I have severe here. abandonment issues now. <laughs> I guess Just I'm from today with deep seated abandonment issues. <laughs> so, all right, guys, I love you guys. You have a great day. Okay. You too. Bye. Bye bye.